Hi guys, just leaving Sandwich, now travelling to Deal. I will cut down this footage so that there's only a few a minute or two of um, driving and hopefully then I'll park up near the beach at Deal. I thought I'd just pop into Falmy Country Park and see if they still charge for their parking. If they do, I'm not going to pay to go through the barriers. I know it sounds a little bit tight, but a couple of quid to cut the quid. And I go to two or three places a day. And as, I, as I've said before, over a course of a year, that adds up to hundreds and hundreds of pounds. And um, especially as there's millions and millions of miles of places you can walk in this country alone why on earth you need to go to one particular park where everybody goes to just so they can park their car and walk their dogs or take their kids around a track I suppose if they could read a map they might go and use just the normal paths but let's have a look here's a barrier up ahead it used to be pay to park now it's actually a barrier to access so I'll have to uh, perform a, a three-point turn here. You can park just outside the park, which is crazy as well. But uh, um, if you come up here every day, you'd be paying ten pounds a week to park and walk your dogs. It's um, it's ridiculous. No need. We're in the middle of the countryside. In fact, this used to be a former colliery, Betsanger Colliery. This, this is the site of. Um, this would have been the slag heaps and whatever and yeah they've spent money redeveloping it but so they should um, but it all it is is trees and tracks and, and a place to park your car and in this country there are thousands and thousands of places to park your car so anyway I won't even bother I've been here before but uh, um, I shall uh, head straight down to deal I should clarify what I said about so they should. I'm referring to the government should redevelop former industries that they've shut down and not just leave slag heaps and derelict buildings. And if it was private land like Snowdown Colliery is, then, then that's a different matter. And I believe the coal board is still paying the family that own that coal mine uh, rent on the land, even though it closed down 25 years ago. Not many people realised there was a coal field in Kent. The Kent coal field in the latter years was the three pits of Betshanger, Tilmanston and Snowdown. Previous Chislet colliery had closed and so many years ago for a few years there were exploratory pits and small pits at Dover and Wingham and various other parts of the Kent countryside. The Kent coal field was producing a tiny amount of coal compared to what was being produced in South Wales or the Midlands, the North, places like Durham. And in fact, near on 100 years ago or 90 years ago, a lot of people came from all those places that I've just mentioned to set up the Kent Coalfield expertise in um, certain mining skills, grafters, and the opportunity to earn a lot more money. I know miners um, even walked a friend of mine, his his granddad, or it might be great grandfather, I'm not sure, but actually walked from South Wales after being blacklisted and found himself a job and he worked at Betsanger for years. In fact, many lines of my friend's family were. My own family, uh, four or five generations of coal miners, mainly Lancashire, and the last two generations before myself. Um, worked in the Kent coal field. I myself, when I was nine, was able to go on a tour of the Snowdown Colliery and it was an eye-opener, I can tell you. 
anyway I'm in deal now and just gonna have a drive through and park down at the seafront That seems a strange place for a phone box. It's actually in the roundabout in the middle of a busy road. Yeah, very strange. In front of me now is Deal Castle, which is a Tudor castle built under the reign of King Henry VIII, and it's an artillery castle and it's um, very rounded. Um, looks like a flower petal from above. Um, maybe I can insert a photo in a moment. Compared to Dover Castle, Deal Castle is a very small castle. It was part of a chain of artillery castles. Just a, a mile down the road is Warmer Castle that looks extremely similar. And this was a very low-lying area of lands between Pegwell and, and Deal and Warmer and Kingsdown, which was ideal for invading armies coming across the channel at a fairly short distance. And also the fact that they didn't have to worry about the cliffs that there, were, that there are at Dover and places like that. And in fact, as my previous videos have mentioned, the Romans a couple of thousand years ago and the Vikings 1500 years ago both invaded Britain via this route, via this small area of coast. So obviously during the reign of King Henry VIII, he was keen to keep various European armies at bay. So I found a perfect place to park near the seafront. It's free of charge and I'd much rather walk along the coast, the seafront here, than round a dirty slag heap of an ex-coal mine any day. Right, time for a cup of coffee. Morning guys, have a new toy today. So, no, not the stove, but let's just get that set up. There we go, a little Mocha Express pot, three cup version. Um, I didn't realise it had skull and crossbones on it when I looked in the picture, it was such a small picture on Amazon, but who cares. Um, and I needed this little ring, a bit annoying that I had to buy a little tiny piece of metal for about four or five pounds, but that goes on there, and that will then sit neatly on there. But I need to fill it with water first, so let me do that. Alright, so let's just fill it up. Just above the line. I'll do. We get a bit more in, but that'll do. Okay, let's put some grounds in, and I can't do that whilst I'm holding the. So that's what I'm using: Lavazza, however you say that, Lavazza espresso grounds, about 100% arabica, and um, it's just a case of trying out a few grounds. So there's the grounds in it. Let's put the lid on, get it on the stove, and. Uh, there we go on the stove, it should only take a few minutes, it's actually my first test of this on my little stove so uh, the other thing I've got you can just uh, see over there is some chocolate, chocolate from Aldi, one of the cheap supermarkets and uh, what I love about this type of chocolate is, well what I love about all chocolate but this one in particular is it's actually five small bars so over the course of the day I'll probably with a load of coffee eat that one but I like to break it up into small little chunks. It is, I don't have sugar or anything, just drink the, the coffee as it comes with a little bit of chocolate. Right, let's see how long this takes. And there's the view. Dog walker's paradise.
There we go, gurgling away. So that should be done. Lovely, nice cup of espresso in the van. Having just read the sign on the lifeboat station, it appears this is a warmer lifeboat station. So I'm on the outskirts of Deal, where it meets warmer, and uh, was watching the ramblings of Bry last night, and he was talking about um, one of the things, or many of the things that he likes, and, and things about him. And one of them was Mr. Solar Face as he calls. And it is gloriously sunny day today. Shame about the uh, <laughs> the freezing cold wind. Yeah, in front of me is now is Deal Castle. Fortunately, it's closed during the week this time of year. So maybe at the weekend, if my English Heritage membership card has come through, I can drive back to Deal and um, have a little tour around the castle. If I do, obviously, that's going to be in a totally separate video to this Deal video. So, like Warmer, Deal has a beach fishing fleet. Uh, only a small one. The next couple of weeks, I'll probably be down in Hastings and they've got the, the country's largest uh, beach fishing fleet. Um, a lot of effort when there's no harbour to pull your boat back out of the water. There in the background is Deal Pier. Go for a walk along that in a moment. In the distance there you can just make out Thanet across Pegwell Bay, the cliffs of Pegwell down to Ramsgate, possibly even the harbour. Okay, I'm on Deal Pier. Um, unfortunately, the footage is going to be a bit shaky, but uh, let's come back to this. Well, this, this is absolutely lovely. It's a little windbreak on the end of the pier, well, in the middle of the pier. And uh, the warmth of that sun is actually quite nice when you're out of the wind. Absolutely lovely. Show me I've got a flask of coffee. The um, building in the distance with a little cross and a ball on top. going to go over there in a minute and find out how um, that helps us till the time. That's got to be the dullest, dirtiest um, post box I've ever seen. They're normally, maybe it's being prepared for painting, but they're normally bright red with uh, a few thick coats of paint. Well, the ball at the top should rise and then on the hour the ball drops and supposedly ships at sea as they see it drop, can set their times. How they do that, I have no idea. 
good job for modern technology because this one doesn't work bit of a groovy forward is it Cortina or Granada I'll have to check it's in one of them Jack years uh, seen better days uh. and what looks like a full moon to round off the day cheers guys